Welcome to Church on the Way. We're really pleased that you could join us today. We trust you're going to enjoy the message and uh, may you be encouraged through the Word of God today. If you really like this channel, please subscribe and uh, enjoy what God has got for us. God bless you. So um, the, the title of uh, uh, today's message um, is the uh, first Sunday into the year is going to 2021 and beyond. So uh, uh, 2020, um, wow, um, what words would you describe uh, 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 for 2020? Crazy, hard, sickness, crossroads, disruptive, loss of jobs, economic trials, crumbling democracy, crumbling capitalism, signs of the times, and most of all, uh, loss of life. Um, so 2020 uh, will go down in the history books as a, as a turning point year. Um, however, <clears throat> here we are in 2021, um, and the message uh, for today is uh, about looking forward, uh, what the Lord has got for us uh, moving forward, and in, in particular, uh, how does Jesus require us to behave? What are the uh, traits of leaders in society uh, to bring hope into, into 2021? Um, so we're going to be we're doing two things today. Um, the first is that we're going to be um, just taking a quick uh, stock take of 2020 uh, and be able to identify um, what are some of the signs um, that have been manifested uh, in 2020 leading towards the end of the age. Uh, but then secondly, and most importantly, what we'll be looking at is uh, about bringing hope uh, and a future into 2021 20, and beyond. Uh, from Jeremiah 31, uh, verse, uh, verse 16. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. And by the way, uh, Jeremiah uh, was a prophet um, that was prophesying um, to the Israelites while they were in captivity, while they were in exile uh, in, in Babylon. Uh, yeah. So this was a, a message to um, a nation uh, that was feeling hopeless. Uh, they, were, uh, they, they had all sorts of troubles. Um, and, and yet this is the message which the Lord uh, brought to them. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of, of Israel. For the Lord will deliver Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the, on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain, the new wine and the olive oil, the young of the flocks and herds. They will, uh, they will be like a well-watered garden and they will sorrow no more. Then young women will dance and be glad, young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. This is what the Lord says. Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be, re will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy, so there is hope for your descendants, declares the Lord. Your children will return to their own land. So the, so the key message of moving into 2021 is that uh, we have a hope and a future um, for us uh, in particular as uh, Christians because we know where we're going. But more than that, uh, we have a task ahead of us where we are called to go to bring this message of good news, uh, of a hope and a future to a world that is fearful, a world that is uh, uh, that has lost uh, hope in, the, in, in capitalism and has lost hope in the, in the Western society. Uh, but we are bringing hope, uh, not some kind of a uh, sort of positive thinking uh, kind of mind hope, but it is the genuine hope of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's uh, primarily what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, but before we get there, <clears throat> um, we're just going to do a quick stock take um, of, of 2020 um, and just uh, provide a bit of uh, understanding um, as to uh, what are some of the things um, that have manifested uh, during the last year. Um, uh, so the way I would describe 2020 is that uh, it was a milestone um, along the journey. 
Um, and what is the journey? Uh, well, it's the journey of the uh, of the age um, that eventually comes towards the towards the end of the age. In other words, uh, this is just one part of the journey uh, leading towards the to the end of the church age, as as what is called in the Bible. The church age uh, is effectively um, from the day that uh, Jesus rose from the dead uh, until the day that he comes back again. That is the church age, <clears throat> and uh, throughout history, uh, people have always been uh, looking forward to the uh, to the day that Jesus Christ comes back to, to take his church back. Um, and in fact, in the first century, I've been uh, reading up quite a lot about uh, church history over the holidays. Um, and in the first century, the uh, the, uh, the, the church uh, were kind of under the impression that Jesus would return back in their generation, uh, which obviously didn't happen. Um, and a lot of things went by. Um, and as society has moved on, um, I think uh, probably most generations have thought, well, this is the age that the, that the Lord Jesus is coming back. Uh, but that wasn't the case. Um, um, however, uh, if we now look back over 2020 and some of the things that have happened in the last year or so, we can start uh, connecting the dots and see that uh, that the end of the church age uh, is close. Um, I don't think that we're quite there yet. Uh, if you read from the Bible and see some of the things that still need to take place, we're not quite there yet. Um, but the Lord says is that uh, that it will that people will be taken by surprise. So we don't know. In fact, even Jesus Christ doesn't even know the the exact date and time that that he will return. But but we need to be prepared. <clears throat> Just to note that um, there's um, the that the doctrine of the last things, which is called eschatology. Uh, so eschatology is the um, is the fancy word for the um, for the theological um, the elements of understanding about the doctrine of last things. There's a huge amount of teaching on that, and um, any amount of information, some good, some bad. Uh, I'd encourage you to, uh, in your own time, to 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 read up about that from good sources. Uh, but that's not what, we, what I want to do today. I don't want to give a, a teaching about eschatology. I rather want to give something really practical, uh, which the Lord Jesus has has put onto my heart. <clears throat> now, um, Jesus spoke quite extensively um, about the end of the age. Uh, in fact, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six chapters in the Gospels alone, which, uh, which are specifically dedicated to uh, where Jesus uh, speaks about the uh, about the end of the age. Matthew 24 to 25. Uh, Mark 13, Luke 21, and John 14 to 15. Um, and there obviously are a whole bunch of other references in the Bible about the, about the end of the age, not in the Gospels, um, Daniel, um, 2 Thessalonians, Revelations, etc., etc. So in your, in your own time, um, go and read some of the more the, um, information about the end of the age. <clears throat> but I want to point out um, four things uh, which I observed um, during 2020 uh, which <clears throat> which have revealed uh, something of the ends of the uh, of the end of the age. They're not the only four things. Uh, there are lots of other things as well. But these are four things which I picked up uh, during the last year. First two <clears throat> are lies and lawlessness. Um, the Bible is very clear that uh, that at the end of the age uh, you're going to increase in lies and lawlessness. Uh, in fact, in two Thessalonians two, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will come, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Um, the man doomed to destruction, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I, I used to tell you these things. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. In other words, when um, when Paul wrote this uh, to the church in Thessalonica, he, he could really see that the secret power of lawlessness was beginning to increase. And uh, we can see that through the through the ages, that that's really uh, increasing all the time. And in particular, uh, if you just look back at 20, uh, 2020, the, the, the amount of lawlessness, uh, not only in nations where we uh, kind of expect lawlessness, but but, uh, but in nations that have been previously uh, regarded as being examples of godliness, even in those nations, uh, lawlessness has increased. And so that's a 2020 has kind of crossed a bit of a boundary uh, where, where, the, um, where the extent of lawlessness has just kind of um, gained momentum. <clears throat> The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the liar and all the ways that wickedness uh, deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that, so that they will believe the lie. So, <clears throat> so the first one was lawlessness. The second one was lies. <clears throat> um, 
Um, my um, my observation um, over the last year and, and, and maybe a couple of lies and a couple of years before that is that we're living uh, within an age of lies. Uh, lies um, in the world appears to be the norm. Uh, people, um, you kind of have to uh, when you when you talk in business or in the in government circles or in the, in, in political circles, you sometimes sort of have to assume that, that people are lying uh, and then try and detect what what the truth is amongst the liars. Uh, and in South Africa, um, it's just been absolutely shameful. Uh, if you if you, uh, you you know just listen to what's uh, coming out of the Zondo Commission uh, over the last year, uh, it's embarrassing. You, you know, you see um, some leaders, uh, uh, leaders in our your previous leaders in our country who are just flat out lying. Uh, everything that seems to come out of their mouth just appears to be lying, and you, and your your mind just gets kind of bombarded with all of these lies. Um, now, uh, that's uh, um, Jesus has warned us of that. He said that in the end times that uh, uh, lawlessness and lies will become the norm, and we've seen that. <clears throat> uh, similarly, within uh, within some of the nations, some of the Western nations, uh, which have been uh, examples of, of godliness, um, that's also been the case. Uh, obviously, in America, what has happened over the, over the last year or so has just been absolutely tragic. Um, I don't have a I don't have an issue uh, uh, with uh, President Trump and whatever's been going on in America. They must do what they must do, and we must uh, do what, what we must do. However, uh, uh, whether you like it or not, um, whatever happens in America sets a trend, uh, well, certainly in the past, has set a trend. Um, it's uh, set a culture. It has um, arguably uh, the, the biggest influence over culture in the world. Uh, and so when we have seen and witnessed something of the demise of, um, of, uh, of law and order uh, and godliness and truth in the nation, which has set itself up as being, uh, as being a, a kind of bastion of, of godliness in the world. It, it is such a graphic um, uh, example, such a graphic icon, which history will, will, will look back and say uh, that that was the year where lies uh, became, became the norm out of the um, out of the governance of, of that nation, <clears throat> um, and uh, and riots. I mean, they've had the worst riots since the Second World War. Uh, the, the storming of the capital uh, um, two weeks ago, or about ten days ago. I mean, that's just uh, who would ever lead that. Um, <clears throat> um, the lies of the president. Um, there was a very interesting um, sort of uh, sort of artwork which was uh, put up in in New York, New York City. Uh, one of the radio stations um, had been tracking uh, the uh, all the lies uh, coming out of the out of the mouth of the president, and they counted up to 25,000 uh, liars, which they put on this huge big artwork um, in, in New York City, and, and they tracked them uh, each color, uh, they put them in colors uh, relating to, you know, um, the economy and to COVID and et cetera, et cetera. And the soul, like half a street, uh, was covered with small little writing about all of these, these 25,000 liars. And, uh, and I thought, well, that is such a graphic um, uh, half a street uh, of, of detail writing uh, of, of all of these lies and untruths. And I thought, well, that is such a graphic um, uh, sort of turning point in the, in the history of man where, where, uh, where lies have, have, have become the norm. So, so the first two um, sort of signs of the age have been uh, the wicked, uh, I mean, lawlessness and lies. The third one um, is the beginning of birth pains. Um, in Matthew 24, uh, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. So that's why it's my personal understanding is that uh, we're not there yet. There are wars and rumors of wars and all these things happening, but we're not quite there yet. <clears throat> um, nation will rise against nation and, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Uh, that's from Matthew 24. <clears throat> in uh, Mark 13, it's almost exactly word for word, exactly the same. In other words, both Matthew and Mark uh, recorded, uh, and they could recall Jesus' words almost word for word, exactly independently. In fact, uh, Mark's gospel was was written first, and then only sometime later was Matthew's uh, gospel written. And Matthew probably didn't have um, didn't see uh, Mark's uh, gospel before he wrote it. And so, but yet, both completely independently, um, they recorded almost word to word exactly. Uh, Mark says, uh, "When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen." 
but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. So, so we mean we can see some of these birth pains beginning to, to take place within the within the world. In Luke 21, verse 11, there will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences. Uh, and uh, uh, what um, uh, greater pestilence has happened in recent times? Uh, than the COVID-19 in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. By the way, uh, COVID uh, has not been the worst pestilence uh, in, in world history. There have been much worse in the past. The bubonic plague uh, in Europe uh, wiped out a significant portion of the entire population of, um, of Europe. Um, the 1918 Spanish flu, uh, which in fact was probably the, the origin of COVID, um, uh, they don't even know how many people died, but they're in the, in the kind of tens of millions. So while it's absolutely tragic as to what's happening now. This is not the first pestilence uh, which has is, which is come into the world and probably not the last one either. Um, <clears throat> Uh, in terms of wars that have manifested uh, during the last year, the war between Ethiopia and Sudan, absolutely tragic. They don't even know how many people have died. Somewhere between 140,000 and 250,000 people have been killed in the war of, uh, between Ethiopia and Sudan. And that will probably escalate, uh, in my view, um, once the Great Renaissance Dam uh, is built on the Blue Nile. Um, that's, a, uh, that's a conflict which is just um, kind, of, um, kind of building up between Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt uh, because, the, because the Nile will be will be dammed up. In Ukraine, 13,000 people were killed. Uh, and in Mozambique, uh, right on our, on our doorstep, the jihadist uh, forces that have um, kind of invaded the northern uh, shores of Mozambique, um, they reckon 2,500 people killed, 500,000 people displaced. Uh, so that's right on our doorstep. So um, so these are some of the birth pains. I don't want to focus on them, uh, but I just want to uh, point out to the fact that uh, uh, we, we cannot be surprised by these things, um, and there will probably be more, um, although we're not going to focus in, on them. Jesus told us that, that these are the beginning of the, of the birth pains uh, to come. And then the fourth, the fourth thing, uh, which is also manifested uh, during the course of 2020, is that uh, it says quite explicitly in Matthew 24, then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. Now, <clears throat> um, I don't think that that has uh, kind of manifested completely yet. I think uh, that will grow in time. Uh, but what's happening in our culture, as you know, is that um, culture, um, uh, particularly in the Western culture, uh, they, uh, uh, people accept any view uh, which is to the left, in other words, anything which is more radical, more uh, promiscuous, more permissive, more um, uh, more kind of modern, etc. Those views are, are easily accepted, particularly within the leftist press. But any views which are towards the right, in other words, which are more conservative and which are more traditional, in particular uh, views which are of a Christian nature, are kind of shunned. Uh, you can say anything of the left, uh, but you can't say anything of the right, uh, and, and without being kind of um, branded as a as a fundamentalist Christian, and and people are the, the kind of the um, culture against uh, 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 Christianity is growing, where where people will say, well, you can't say that because it's because it's it's uncool or it's unpolitically correct, or whatever. And in fact, you can, in some cases, depending on the on the laws, you can even be jailed uh, or fired from your job uh, if you if you express uh, some of the word of God uh, uh, publicly. Within a, within a workplace or within a, a government environment. So, um, so those are some of the some of the signs of the manifestation of, of the end of the age, which have which have appeared in 2020. I don't want to dwell on those, uh, but it's important that we uh, just have a sense of taking stock as to, as to what has happened in, in 2020. So that's the first half of the message. I want to put that aside uh, and say, well, you know, the, that's the that's the kind of bad news portion. That's the that's the hard portion. But the more important portion is, well, let's look forward. What about 2021? Uh, we now in 2021, uh, we now looking into a new a new era, uh, into a, a new phase. Um, and what has God got uh, for stock for us in, in 2021? Um, and um, very interestingly, uh, Jesus gave some very, very practical examples on um, how we need to behave. What are the what are the principles that we need to ad adhere to in moving into into the end of the age? And um, in 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 in, uh, um, in Matthew's gospel as well as as well as in John's gospel, he gives uh, three very, very practical parables. Um, and, and that's why I don't want to go into eschatology because.
technology is so complex and we get stuck in all the details, or whatever. But let's listen to what Jesus Christ said about how we, how we need to uh, respond uh, uh, into the end of the age, and, and in particular at 2021. So there are three parables uh, which I want to pull out, which you all know very well. But there's there's a particular um, kind of common thread uh, which I want to thread through these three, these three parables. First parable um, is. It, it, uh, this is the 10 virgins uh, in, in Matthew 25. And the, and the message which I want you to kind of hear, uh, uh, that as I read the, the parable, uh, the message I want you to hear through it is that we need to take personal responsibility. We need to take personal responsibility. Um, the context uh, of, the, of, of, the, of the parable is that, um, uh, that the, uh, the, the 10 virgins um, who in fact are probably in, 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 the, in the Hebrew sense are the kind of the younger sisters of the bridegroom and the, and the younger cousins. Uh, and they, they were they're kind of tasked with, um, with ushering in the bridegroom and making, making the house and the, and the ceremony all pretty and flowers and uh, if they had Perfumes and things, I guess that's what they would have done. So they they were uh, they were there to to serve the bridegroom, <clears throat> um, and, and this is the this is the parable which which Jesus describes. So at that time, which is the end times, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At, mid at midnight, in other words, they were surprised. It was, a, it was a time when they didn't think it was going to happen. It was, a, it was like, wow, uh, at, at midnight, a, a very crucial time at night. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And so they all kind of woke up and sort of had to get their ducks in a row. Then, then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. I want to repeat that. Uh, the, the foolish ones said, uh, that's, said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. Um, the virgins who were ready went, went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Now, now, the point which I want to bring out of this parable is that uh, Jesus was making the point that um, uh, that in the end times um, uh, we mustn't uh, we mustn't be surprised because he is giving us a heads up as to what's happening. But it uh, he, he calls to each one of us that we need to take personal responsibility uh, for that which God has called us to do. The ten virgins had a very particular task, but similarly, we've also got very particular tasks, and we need to understand what are the tasks that you and I are required to do, and we need to take personal responsibility for that. In other words, in a church environment, uh, we cannot rely on other people who are going to be doing prayer meetings in the hospital or on the deacons who are going to be doing different things or elders who are going to be doing different things. Each of us um, have, got a, have got a task to do. Uh, Jesus has commissioned us to go, and we need to figure out what, what is it that we need to do. We don't have the luxury of uh, just kind of coasting along and jogging along with the flow. Uh, that's what the what the unwise virgins did. Uh, that they were just kind of going along with the flow and they, they had their lamps, but they weren't they weren't really prepared. They weren't thinking ahead. They weren't proactive. They weren't um, uh, kind of taking personal responsibility. Um, so, um, so, so, so that's the that's the first parable is that we need to take uh, personal responsibility for 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 that which was Jesus has called us to do. The second parable, uh, this is the parable of the, of the talents, uh, also found in Matthew 25. And the, and the message from, from this parable is that we must be bold and not timid. Let me repeat that. We must be bold and not timid. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and, and entrusted his wealth to them. Uh, Jesus has entrusted his wealth to us. Uh, he's, he's called us in the last year in our church and church on the way to be, to be church on the go. And so he has entrusted very, very precious things to us. Uh, to one, he gave five bags of gold, uh, to, to another two bags and to another one bag, each according to his ability. 
every one of us uh, have been given different abilities. It actually really does not matter what our, uh, what our abilities are. Some might have more ability, some might have less ability, whatever. Um, Jesus has entrusted us um, a bag of gold, wealth, in accordance with our abilities. And Jesus is going to judge us according to what did we do with the, with the bag of gold that was in keeping with our abilities. Then he went on his journey. <clears throat> the man who had received the five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the, but the man who had received only one bag went off, <clears throat> dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. In other words, <clears throat> uh, this servant, um, he, was, uh, he was bold. Uh, he wasn't timid. Uh, he was um, proactive. He probably took a few um, kind of uh, risks, which were reasonable risks. He, he probably kind of figured out what's happening in the markets and whatever. And he said, well, I, I'm diligent and I need to uh, grow the money and grow this wealth. Uh, and I, I need to grow this investment, which, uh, uh, which his master had given him. And he, and, and he took that out and he grew it and, and he doubled it. Similarly, with a, with a man that was given two talents, he, he also doubled uh, that which God had invested him. But the but the man, uh, but but the wicked uh, servant uh, was the guy who took that what God had invested him in, and he dug a hole and, and, and put it under the ground. It's almost like he was sitting on his hands. In other words, uh, that's um, uh, that's kind of uh, um, uh, uh, talking about uh, us sometimes where we become lazy or uh, we, we timid or and, and, and we're too afraid to actually go out and be bold and we sort of sit on our hands and the talents uh, and the gifts uh, and the people that God has given us to, to, um, to bring the gospel to, uh, we kind of sit and wait for everyone else to do it and, and, and the and, and the um and the word was very clear i mean it's it's, it's a, this is a very hard parable to kind of get to grips with and it's, and and the, and the master said and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness um and, and so it wasn't that the servant was um evil he didn't do anything you know he, he, he didn't murder or steal the money in fact he he, he very diligently uh, kept money, but but uh, but the but the parable is saying is that if you don't take the money and grow the money, uh, you, you'll be called worthless and lazy. Uh, now uh, Jesus was using the the, the uh, money as the parable. It's not necessarily money, although I think it probably is as well. I think in our financial um, investments, we also called to be bold and proactive and, and to grow the money. But uh, what this is. Probably more more speaking about is the the the, the harvest uh, which Jesus Christ has given us for, as a church to to go to go and reap the harvest to go and uh, bring in all of those sheaves. Uh, we need to be proactive and, and, and to grow the, that harvest. So that's the so that's the that's the second parable um, to be bold and proactive. Um, this is not the time to think back. Be creative. Expand. Do more with less. Um, we cannot rely on someone else. We need to be bold in our businesses, um, uh, and this is not the time uh, to be timid. To be timid, uh, we need to be really bold and out there. So that's the second parable. So the first first parable was of the ten virgins was to uh, we need to take personal responsibility. Second parable of the of the talents is that we need to be bold and not timid. The third and last parable. <coughs> um, this is the vine and the branches, um, and uh, this is from John 15. John is, um, so, so, so Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the three synoptic uh, gospels are absolutely awesome because they are very kind of rational and they kind of set out, um, you know, Jesus was born and it's, it's a very kind of organized uh, gospel. John, on the other hand, is like, out of left field, uh, and John Black comes from a completely different aspect, uh, and this is the this is the parable that uh, John kind of thought that, uh, that this is the one that he needs to write down uh, into his gospel, and this is the one of the vine and the branches. Um, I won't read it all, but I'll, but I'll, I'll kind of give you the the uh, the gist of it. Uh, and the key here is, um, in terms of, of our context, is that we need to bear fruit. Uh, that's the that's the key lesson out of this one is that we need to bear fruit. Um, so I am the true. I am the true vine. This is Jesus speaking. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch 
in me that does not uh, that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful so you can you can hear oh and by the way um uh, jesus spoke this right at the end uh, to his disciples just before he was he was um, he was arrested so it's kind of the last um teaching as it were that jesus gave gave before he was uh, he was um arrested and and then executed and and the thing that he's talking about is being fruitful <clears throat> um uh, he prunes so that it, it will be even more fruitful you are already clean because of the word i've spoken to you remain in me as i also remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me so what he's saying is that as, as i'm sure you all know that uh, the, the common analogy is that uh, jesus is the is the rootstock um, and we need to be kind of grafted i don't know if you know um, so i'm not a gardener but um but as you, you know you understand it that you kind of cut into the rootstock and, and then you graft uh, the branch into the into the uh, the rootstock so that the branch receives um, the sap coming through the rootstock uh, from the ground. And the analogy is that we need to be rooted into Jesus. We need to be grafted into Jesus. So the life of the Holy Spirit um, that that uh, uh, that comes through Jesus and the life that that comes up through the soil and all the goodness and nutrients, whatever uh, that comes through the rootstock through Jesus Christ into us. And with that, uh, the branch then bears fruit. Exactly the same way. That's that's how Jesus calls us to, us to be. Is that we as a church are called to go. Uh, we need to bear fruit. It's not only not only bear fruit for ourselves and our own businesses and our family and all those things, uh, but we need to go and bear fruit in terms of bringing in this harvest. That's why Jesus spoke to them about this at the end of the age to say that at the end of the age there is there is so much harvest to, to bring in. We, we need to be bearing fruit. We need to be proactive. <clears throat> we need to be growing uh, in order to, to fulfill God's purposes for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so um, so this is a this is a, a very very um, simple message. <clears throat> um, so let's just recap that on the <clears throat> on the. Um, on the parables so the first one is on the on the 10 virgins uh, is that uh, we need to take personal responsibility the second one on the on the talents is that we uh, that we need to grow we need to we mustn't be timid we must be bold and the third one uh, on, on the on the vine is that we need to bear fruit now <clears throat> let's put that together and kind of connect the dots uh, in 2021 um, and looking beyond uh, this is the message which uh, Jesus Christ gives us is that this is not the time to be timid this is not the time to say well there's um, you know there's COVID and there's uh, economic uh, troubles and things are happening in America and you know there's Brexit and I don't know all the things whatever that are happening that are that in a world that is fearful this is not the time for us to be uh, timid and uh, kind of lacking confidence and, and bury the, the talents under the bed and now is the time for us to, to stand up to be bold um, to grow to bear fruit um, to, to, to take personal responsibility not just kind of jogging along uh, with the rest of the church and we need to uh, figure out what is that uh, what Jesus Christ has given me to do given you to do so that we can take up uh, that uh, so that we can uh, be proactive uh, um, uh, bringing life into a world which is scared and which is fearful in this time so that's my that's uh, what the lord has put onto my heart uh, for the first uh, service in 2021 i trust that that um, that inspires all of us uh, that uh, let's grab this 2021 with both hands. Uh, let's take every opportunity that we have. Let's not fall into the trap of uh, kind of chilling out or um, getting fearful. Uh, let's go and tell others uh, about the good news. Of uh, course, really, there the, the is fantastic things to come. Um, <clears throat> I, I just uh, just as an ex uh, just one little example, uh, um, it was a privilege to be able to uh, attend uh, uh, Daniel and Danielle's um, wedding uh, on YouTube uh, on the 6th of January. Uh, and and it was such a it was such an amazing picture is that uh, in these you know kind of dark times and I don't know whether whether the Dan's are listening to this if you are I, I trust that you're really enjoying this time together on honeymoon as well it is such a, a picture that uh, Jesus speaks about getting married uh, in 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 these times you know uh, it's growth it's 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 not um, they have children you know I'm not talking to you to the Dan's necessarily but uh, to, to all of us it, it's a, a God encouraging us to to grow in these times so i hope that you're encouraged that um let's go out there and 
break boundaries and grow and be proactive uh, and be bold and not timid. So bless you all. Um, I'd like to pray with us, uh, if, if you if you don't mind, and then Brad, uh, but it will hand over to you. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, I thank you that um, uh, that you spoke so much uh, about the end times, and Lord Jesus, that you were so practical uh, in how you spoke about the end times, and that you gave us very clear um, principles and guidance on how, how we should behave uh, in, in these times. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that uh, these three principles um, of uh, taking responsibility, um, growing, be, uh, being bold, um, and, uh, uh, um, and bearing fruit, uh, Lord Jesus, I, I pray that, uh, Holy Spirit, that you will inculcate uh, these principles into us uh, and uh, there will be, just be growth in every single one of, every single person that is in this church, Lord, and in our communities and in wider church, Lord, even in, in South Africa. Uh, Lord, I pray that you bless these incredible people, Lord, who are dedicated to you, Lord God, who are sincere, who are authentic. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you bless them, Lord God. Bless, um, bless us, Lord Jesus, as we go out and we are, are uh, bold and proactive, Lord. I pray that you will grow us in every way, Lord, whatever talents you've given us, Lord. I, I pray that you would help us to multiply the, the bounty from those talents which you've given us, Lord. We pray for your protection over us, Lord, uh, Lord, against this terrible COVID, uh, Lord, and all the other things. We pray for your protection, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that we're not immune just because we're Christians, but Lord Jesus, we trust in you because you are our Savior, Lord. You are the, you're the one that is promised a health and vitality lord and so uh, lord, we, we pray for your protection and lord those who those who are sick i think particularly of, of doc lord who was in icu and, uh, and is now recovering i pray lord god that you uh, just bring a full and total recovery to him lord and anyone else lord that um, not aware of lord who have been sick and those who have lost uh, loved ones uh, lord the, the four people um I just want to perhaps mention them. We didn't mention them all by name, uh, but we have lost uh, four loved ones during the past uh, six weeks or so. Rowena Kerr, um, Chile von Rendsburg, uh, Chris Momberg, uh, and also Graham Gabriel. Um, so we just uh, reach out, Lord Jesus, to, to their families um, and uh, uh, Lord, their loved ones, uh, Lord, that even now, Lord, as they mourn, uh, that yet you will bring joy and gladness to them. In your almighty name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.